The sun dipped low over the horizon, casting long shadows across the cobblestone streets of Eldoria, a town whispered in tales as a crossroads of destiny for those daring enough to heed its call. Kale, the mage healer, arrived as the market squares emptied, his azure robes fluttering lightly in the evening breeze. The crystal atop his staff pulsed with a serene glow, echoing the calm he sought to maintain in his heart. Despite his outward tranquility, Kale's mind buzzed with curiosity about the contract that promised to bind his fate with unknown allies. At the town's robust inn, a haven for wanderers and warriors alike, Sir Gavriel, the paladin tank, was already waiting. His armor gleamed even in the dimming light, a testament to his unwavering dedication to his order and the divine path he followed. The lion on his shield was not just a symbol of strength, but of his noble heart, willing to stand as the bulwark against any darkness that threatened the innocent. In stark contrast to the paladin's shining presence, Lysandra moved through the shadows that clung to the alleys, her dark cloaks blending with the night. The faint glow of her eyes suggested her intimate dance with death and the arcane, a dance that many misunderstood and feared. Yet her arrival in Eldoria was no accident. The whispers of the spirits had guided her to this nexus, promising a purpose that could harness her dark gifts. Nyx the assassin observed from a secluded rooftop, her presence betrayed only by a brief glint of moonlight on her twin daggers. The threads of darkness stitched into her leather armor seemed to drink in the night, rendering her nearly invisible. She watched the gathering below with a calculated gaze, weighing the potential of these strangers with whom she was to share her journey. Lastly, Aaron, the ranger, approached the inn with silent steps, his attire of greens and browns a stark contrast to the stone and wood of the town. The bow on his back was as much a part of him as the keen eyes that scanned the horizon for threats and opportunities alike. He had tracked beasts and bandits alike through wild forests, but it was the thrill of the unknown that led him to Eldoria. As they convened in the warmth of the inn, each member of this newly formed party eyed the others with a mix of suspicion, curiosity, and in Gavriel's case, a hint of disapproval. They were an ensemble of contrasts, bound by a contract none fully understood, yet all felt the pull of destiny in its words. Kale broke the silence with a voice as smooth as the silk of his robes. We are brought together by fate, but it will be our choices that forge us into companions, he said, extending a hand in greeting. Gavriel nodded, his hand meeting Kale's in a firm shake. The light guides me to stand with you all, he declared, his voice carrying the certainty of his faith. Lysandra's lips quirked in a half-smile, her tone laced with a hint of mystery. Shadows and light, life and death, all are threads in the same tapestry, she spoke softly, yet her voice carried the weight of her power. Nick simply nodded from her corner, her eyes locked onto each member, gauging their worth, while Aaron leaned against the wall, an arrow idly turning in his fingers. The wilderness teaches us that the pack survives where the lone wolf perishes, he said his voice steady and sure. Their first night together was filled with cautious conversation, each sharing tales that danced around their deeper secrets. They spoke of their skills, their past victories, and the paths that had led them to this moment. As the fire in the hearth crackled and the ale flowed, a reluctant bond began to form, fragile as a thread, yet essential. They retired to their rooms with the knowledge that come dawn, their first true test would begin. The goblins in the nearby cave were but a shadow of the challenges that lay ahead, and whether they would emerge as forged allies or splintered strangers was a tale yet to be told. But in their hearts, each knew that the threads of their stories were now irrevocably intertwined, for better or for worse. The morning light cascaded through the stained glass windows of the inn, casting mosaics of vibrant colors across the wooden floor where the party gathered. Breakfast was a quiet affair. The weight of the impending quest pressed upon them, tightening their throats and tempering their spirits with a mix of anticipation and dread. As they stepped out into the cool air of dawn, Eldoria seemed to awaken with them, the town stirring to life as they made their way to the mayor's residence. The man who had penned the contract awaited them, 
his demeanor a mix of gratitude and desperation. Thank you for answering our call, the mayor began, his hands clasped before him. The goblins have grown bolder by the night, and our people fear for their lives. Your task is to clear the cave they've infested. Do this, and you shall be rewarded handsomely. The party nodded, understanding the gravity of their mission. As they left the mayor's home, the reality of their situation settled in. They were no longer individuals but a unit, and the success of their mission hinged on their ability to act as one. Aaron took the lead, his keen eyes scouting the path as they ventured towards the cave. The forest that cradled their destination was dense, the canopy above a tapestry of green that barely let the sunlight through. Birds chirped cautiously, and the underbrush rustled with the life hidden within. I can track the goblins by their stench alone, Aaron murmured, his voice barely above a whisper as he led them through the thicket. Stay close, and be ready for anything. Nyx moved like a shadow at his side, her eyes scanning for ambushes, while Kale's staff illuminated their path with a soft glow. Sir Gavriel brought up the rear, his shield ready to defend against any surprise attack. The mouth of the cave soon loomed before them, a gaping maw in the earth that reeked of filth and corruption. The darkness within beckoned them, promising peril and with luck, the glory of victory. Lysandra stepped forward, her hands weaving signs in the air, whispering incantations. Wisps of ethereal light emerged, coalescing into skeletal forms that marched ahead of them, silent sentinels ready to meet the first blow. With a nod from Aaron, the party entered the cave, the light from Kale's staff and Lysandra's spectral minions the only reprieve from the oppressive dark. The walls of the cavern were slick with moisture, and the echo of their footsteps was soon joined by the skittering of unseen creatures. They didn't have to wait long for their first encounter. A snarl cut through the silence, and a horde of goblins charged, their crude weapons raised and their faces twisted in malice. The battle was immediate and chaotic. Nyx's daggers found their marks in the shadows, each thrust precise and lethal. Aaron's arrows flew with deadly accuracy, thudding into goblin flesh. Sir Gavriel was an immovable force, his shield absorbing the brunt of the assault as he swung his sword in wide, cleaving arcs and through it all Kale remained a beacon of calm. His chants rose above the din of battle, weaving a tapestry of healing energy that mended wounds and bolstered spirits. As a goblin blade found a chink in Sir Gavriel's armor, a warm light suffused the paladin, knitting flesh and steel together in a moment of divine intervention. The tide of battle turned swiftly. The goblins, overwhelmed by the party's prowess and unity, began to falter. Lysandra's summoned creatures harried the fleeing goblins, ensuring none could regroup or escape. As the last of the creatures fell, the party stood victorious, their breaths heavy with exertion. The cave, once a place of dread, was now silent, save for the panting of the five who had proven themselves more than mere strangers. They shared glances, each nodding in silent acknowledgement of the other's skills. Words were unnecessary. Their actions had spoken volumes. They were beginning to understand each other, to see the value in their differences, and to recognize that together they were formidable. As they ventured deeper into the cave, wary of further threats, they found the remnants of the goblin's encampment. Among the detritus and stolen goods, an object caught the light, drawing them near. It was an artifact, old and imbued with magic that hummed with a strange energy. Its significance was unclear, but its power was undeniable. The quest they had begun was merely the first step of a journey far greater than any of them had imagined. With the artifact in tow, they exited the cave, the daylight welcoming them back. They had faced their first trial and emerged not just unscathed, but strengthened. The artifact, cradled in Sir Gavriel's armored hands, seemed to thrum with a life of its own, its surface etched with runes that danced under Kale's inquisitive gaze. This is old magic. Kale murmured, his fingers hovering over the carvings, careful not to touch. Ancient and powerful. Lysandra leaned in, her eyes reflecting a scholarly hunger as she studied the artifact. It's not just power, it's purposeful, she added. This was made for something specific, but what? The journey back to Eldoria was quiet, each member of the party lost in thought over the implications of their find. 
The goblins had been but a symptom of a deeper malaise that had taken root in the land. The artifact was a piece of that puzzle, and they were the ones chosen to solve it. As they approached the town, they noticed a palpable change in the air. The townspeople, once fearful, now looked upon them with hope. The mayor greeted them with a broad smile and open arms, grateful for their success. You've done us a great service, the mayor exclaimed, leading them back to his residence. The goblins have troubled us for too long, but what is this? His eyes widened upon seeing the artifact. It's the source of your troubles, or at least connected to it, Aaron explained, his voice steady. The goblins were drawn to its power. The mayor's brow furrowed, a sense of dread replacing his earlier relief. Such things are best left undisturbed, he said warily. You must take it to the temple of the old gods. The priests will know what to do. The party agreed, understanding the wisdom in seeking greater knowledge. Yet as they prepared for this new leg of their journey, the weight of responsibility pressed upon them. The artifact linked them to the fate of Eldoria, and perhaps to the very balance of power within the realm. Under the cover of night, they set out once more, the artifact secured within a cloth of velvet. They traveled in silence, each lost in their own thoughts. The road to the Temple of the Old Gods was long and fraught with danger, but they were bound together now, not just by contract, but by a shared destiny. The temple lay nestled in the heart of an ancient forest, its stone walls covered in ivy and moss, standing as a testament to the old ways that still held sway in certain corners of the world. As they approached, the air grew cooler, the presence of the divine palpable in the whispering leaves and the soft glow of the moon. The high priest, an elderly man with eyes that shone with an inner light, met them at the temple doors. The artifact you carry is one of five, sacred to the old gods, he revealed after a long examination. Its brethren were scattered across the land to prevent their convergence, for together they have the power to awaken an ancient evil. The party exchanged uneasy glances. The quest had grown in scope and danger. They were no longer merely adventurers. They were guardians standing against a potential darkness that sought to return to the world. The high priest blessed them, his words resonant and filled with power. You have been chosen by forces greater than you know. The path ahead is perilous, but you must persevere. The fate of all may rest upon your shoulders. As they left the temple, the artifact now safely secured within a reliquary designed to dampen its call to its counterparts, the party felt a renewed sense of purpose. The goblin cave had been but the first test, a prelude to the true adventure that awaited them. They set up camp under the protective canopy of the ancient trees, the night alive with the sounds of the forest. As they sat around the fire, they finally allowed themselves to relax, the flickering flames casting dancing shadows upon their faces. We are more than a party now, Kale said, breaking the silence. We are the chosen of prophecy, whether by the gods or by chance. Sir Gavriel nodded, his face set in a determined line. Then let us be worthy of that choice, for Eldoria, for the realm, for each other. Lysandra looked at the reliquary, her expression somber. We stand between the world and its end, she stated, her voice carrying the weight of truth. Nyx, ever the pragmatist, sharpened her blades, her eyes glinting in the firelight. Then let's make sure we're prepared. We fight not just for glory, but for survival. Aaron, who had been quiet, stood and walked to the edge of the light. The night is full of terrors, but also wonders. Let's ensure the latter prevail, he said, gazing into the darkness beyond the campfire's reach, where the unknown awaited. His companions nodded, feeling the weight of his words, recognizing the dual nature of their journey. The following morning, under a canopy of whispering leaves, the party packed their sparse camp and set out. The reliquary containing the artifact was secured in Sir Gavriel's pack its presence a constant reminder of their newfound duty. They moved with purpose, the temple's revelations having forged a stronger bond among them, a bond that would soon be tested. Their path led them to the edges of the Mirkwood Vale, a place whispered in taverns to be cursed. The trees here grew dense and twisted, their branches clawing at the sky. 
The light that filtered through was sickly and dim, casting the entire veil in a perpetual gloom. It wasn't long before they encountered signs of the veil's corruption, a village abandoned and in ruins. The houses were dilapidated, their structures claimed by rot and overgrowth. The silence was a heavy shroud, and the air hung thick with the stench of decay. We should investigate, Aaron suggested, an edge of caution in his tone. There might be survivors, or at least clues to what occurred here. The party agreed, moving through the desolate village with weapons at the ready. Lysandra's eyes glowed with a pale light as she summoned her spectral minions to scout the shadows. Nyx slinked from building to building, her silent movements a dance with death itself. It was Sir Gavriel who found the first body, a villager who had met a grim end, their expression frozen in a rictus of terror. There is dark magic at work here, he said grimly, his hand resting on the hilt of his sword. Kale knelt beside the fallen, his hands glowing with a soft light as he searched for any residual enchantments. This was no mere spell, he said, troubled. It's as if the very life was drained from these people. A sudden clatter from a nearby house startled them, and Aaron was quick to knock an arrow. They approached cautiously, Nyx taking the lead with her daggers at the ready. The door swung open with a creak, revealing a huddled figure within. It was a child, no more than ten summers old, her eyes wide with fear. Monsters, she whispered, her voice hoarse. The shadows... They came alive. Lysandra stepped forward, her dark presence somehow comforting to the child. You're safe now, she assured her, her voice softer than the others had heard before. We'll protect you. The child, named Aaliyah, told them of how the shadows had swept through the village, taking her family, her friends, everyone she knew. She had survived by hiding, her smallness a boon in the darkness. We cannot leave her, Sir Gavriel stated, his resolve clear. We will take her to safety before we continue our quest. The party agreed, and with Elia in tow, they made their way through the veil, the darkness around them seeming to watch with intent eyes. But they were a force united and not easily intimidated. As they neared the veil's boundary, the shadows coalesced into forms, twisted creatures born of darkness and malice. They were upon the party in an instant, a swirling mass of teeth and claws, the battle was fierce and unforgiving. Aaron's arrows flew, each one finding its mark in the formless bodies of their foes. Nyx's blades sang a deadly song, each strike a whisper of death. Sir Gavriel stood as their shield, his armor alight with holy fury, as he smote the creatures with righteous wrath. Kale's magic wove through them all, a thread of power that healed and fortified. But it was Lysandra who turned the tide. With words of ancient power, she tore at the very essence of the shadow creatures, banishing them with a display of necromantic might that left her companions in awe. As the last of the shadows dissipated, the party stood, breathing heavily, their victory hard won. They looked at each other, their respect for one another deepened by the trial they had just endured. Aaliyah clung to Lysandra, her small form shaking. You're brave, the necromancer told her a rare smile gracing her lips. Bravery is the light that keeps the darkness at bay. With the veil behind them and the light of day warming their faces, they continued on, their spirits lifted. They had faced the darkness together and emerged stronger. The path ahead was fraught with danger, but they were ready. They had each other, and that was their greatest strength. As the five companions journeyed on, with Elia now in their care, the sun climbed higher breaking through the leaves and dapples of light that danced upon their path. The artifact, quiet within its reliquary, seemed almost benign, but the weight of its potential darkness lingered in their minds. They made their way to the nearest township, a place called Verdantide, known for its lush farms and welcoming folk. Here, they hoped to find respite and a safe haven for Aaliyah. The townspeople greeted them with open arms, unaware of the shadows that had trailed the party's steps. Sir Gavriel, acting with the honor that marked his every deed, sought out the local constable, a sturdy woman named Merith, who regarded the group with a practical eye. We'll take the lass in, she promised after hearing their tale. She'll be safe here, and we'll find a family for her. You have my word. Relieved at Elia's safety, the group turned their attention to the next step of their journey. 
They convened in the local inn, where a fire crackled in the hearth, and the smell of roasting meat filled the air. It was a stark contrast to the peril they had faced in the Mirkwood Vale. Over plates of hot food, they discussed the artifact and its siblings. We should seek the wisdom of the old archives, Kale suggested, his voice low. There might be records, something to tell us where the other artifacts might be. The Temple of the Old Gods was clear in its warning, Sir Gavriel added. We must prevent the convergence of these artifacts at all costs. Nyx, ever watchful, kept her gaze on the inn's patrons. We won't be the only ones looking for them. There are others who would seek to use the artifacts for ill. And we'll be ready for them, Aaron said confidently, his hand resting on his bow. Lysandra, who had been quiet, spoke up. There are forces that would seek to manipulate the darkness these artifacts hold. We must be vigilant, not just in battle, but in spirit. The decision was made to set out at dawn. They would travel to the Great Library of Eldarion, a repository of knowledge vast enough to hold the answers they sought. The road would be long, and the danger great, but they were a unit now, a fellowship forged in battle and bound by a common goal. As night fell and the inn grew quiet, the party took to their beds, though sleep came uneasily. Their dreams were filled with whispers of the past, echoes of the artifact's ancient magic seeping into their minds. They saw visions of wars long past, of the old gods and the shadows that had once threatened to engulf the world. Kale awoke with a start, his heart racing. He looked around, finding comfort in the familiar shapes of his companions sleeping nearby. The visions were a warning, a reminder of the power they sought to contain. When morning came, they set out once more, the artifacts secure, the path ahead uncertain. Verdantide faded into the distance, and the open road welcomed them with the promise of destiny. Their journey to the great library of Eldarion took them through valleys and over mountains, through hamlets and cities that buzzed with life. Everywhere they went, they heard tales of strange happenings, of shadows seen in the corners of vision, and of a growing unease. The great library of Eldarion was a monument to knowledge, its towering spires reaching towards the heavens, its stone walls lined with books, and scrolls of every age. The librarians, a sect of monks dedicated to the preservation of history, greeted them with cautious curiosity. We seek information on these, Sir Gavriel said, presenting the reliquary to the head librarian, an ancient man with eyes like polished agate. With a reverence befitting the artifact's age, the librarian opened the reliquary and studied the runes. This is a language old as the stars, he murmured, but not lost to us. Come, we have much to uncover. Days turned to nights as the party pored over ancient texts, guided by the librarians. They learned of the artifact's creation, forged by a conclave of mages who had sought to bind a great evil that had risen from the world's depths. The artifacts were keys, each holding a portion of the power used to seal the darkness away. One remains in the north, in the frozen wastes, Kale read aloud from a brittle parchment. Another lies beneath the waves, guarded by the merfolk of the Silver Shoals. And one, Lysandra said, her finger tracing the words of a faded map, is entombed within the Blightmoor, a place of death and decay. They now had their path laid before them, armed with the knowledge of the artifact's locations, the group prepared to leave Eldarion. Yet, as they gathered their supplies, the air turned cold a harbinger of the challenges that lay ahead. They set their sights northward to the frozen wastes, where the first of the remaining artifacts was said to reside. They traveled for days, the landscape growing bleaker with each passing mile. The once lush fields gave way to frost-covered ground, and the trees stood like skeletal hands reaching for the gray sky. The frozen wastes were living up to their name a desolate expanse of ice and snow that stretched endlessly. The cold was relentless, seeping into their bones, a constant adversary against which they had to guard. Aaron led the way, his ranger skills finding paths where none seemed to exist. Nix's eyes scoured the horizon for threats, her assassin's instincts on high alert. 
Kale's magic provided them with warmth, small globes of fire that hovered near their hands, staving off the worst of the chill. Sir Gavriel's unwavering resolve kept their spirits from flagging, while Lysandra's quiet chants reminded them of the strength found in shadows. It was on the edge of a frozen lake, the ice thick and opaque, that they were ambushed. Without warning, figures emerged from the whiteout, bandits wrapped in furs, their breaths misting in the frigid air. They were after the artifact, their intentions clear in their grasping hands and greedy eyes. The battle erupted amidst the howling wind, the clash of steel on steel echoing across the ice. Sir Gavriel was a bastion against the onslaught, his shield absorbing blows that would have felled lesser warriors. Nyx danced between their attackers, her daggers a blur of silver that left only death in their wake. Aaron's bowstrings sang in the crisp air, each arrow finding the weak spots in the bandit's armor. Kale's spells arced across the battlefield, bolts of ice and fire that struck with precision and deadly intent. Lysandra summoned the spirits of the dead, fallen bandits rising to fight against their former comrades, a macabre turn of the tide. The bandits, realizing they had underestimated their prey, began to falter. Their numbers dwindled under the party's concerted assault, their dreams of wealth turning to dust on the wind. The survivors fled, leaving behind the wounded and the dead, a stark reminder of the dangers the group faced. As the adrenaline of battle faded, the party took stock of their situation. They had won, but the attack had been a sign others knew of the artifacts and would stop at nothing to claim them. The path ahead seemed more perilous than ever. We must be cautious, Kale advised as they tended to their wounds. Our enemies are not just the creatures of shadow, but the greed of men. Sir Gavriel nodded, his face set in grim determination. Then we will meet them with blade, bow, and spell. We are not easily deterred. Lysandra looked out across the lake, her eyes thoughtful. This will not be the last we see of such ambition. We must stay vigilant. Nyx wiped her blades clean, her expression unreadable. Let them come, she said with a cold confidence. They will find no easy prey here. Aaron surveyed the horizon, his gaze distant. The waste will test us, but we must press on. The artifact awaits, and with it, the fate of our world. With their resolve steeled by the skirmish, the party continued their journey. The frozen wastes loomed before them, a challenge that they would face together. The bond that held them was more than mere companionship. It was the bond of those who shared a cause worth any sacrifice. And so they marched on, the ice beneath their feet a silent witness to their passage, the cold a constant adversary. But their spirits remained unbroken, warmed by the fire of their shared resolve and the knowledge that they were the world's best hope against the gathering darkness. The wind howled like a pack of wolves as the party trudged through the relentless snow of the frozen wastes. The white landscape stretched infinitely, its beauty a treacherous facade that concealed the dangers lurking within. Yet the group's determination never waned. They were a beacon of hope in the vast white desert. Days turned into nights, marked only by the changing hues of the sky. As the sun dipped below the horizon, painting the snow in shades of pink and orange, each evening they huddled together for warmth, sharing tales and plans, the artifact's fate a constant shadow over their camaraderie. It was during one such night that Kael, his face illuminated by the soft glow of the campfire, spoke up. I have been studying the runes on the artifact, he began, his voice carrying the weight of hidden knowledge. There's more to it than we knew. The artifacts, when combined, not only have the power to release darkness, but also to bestow immense power upon the wielder. The group exchanged uneasy glances, the gravity of Kale's words hanging heavily in the air. The artifacts were not mere keys. They were a source of power that could tempt even the purest of hearts. Sir Gavriel's brow furrowed in concern. Such power is dangerous, he said solemnly. It can corrupt, turn ally against ally. Lysandra nodded in agreement. We must ensure that no one, not even ourselves, is tempted by such might, she said her voice echoing her inner resolve to stand against the shadows within and without. Nyx remained silent, her thoughts unreadable, but her grip on her daggers tightened, an unspoken pledge to cut down any threat that may arise, external or internal. 
Aaron looked into the fire, the dancing flames reflecting in his eyes. We must guard not only against the darkness without, but also the darkness within, he mused, speaking a truth they all felt, but seldom voiced. With this new understanding, the group settled into an uneasy sleep, their dreams filled with visions of power and the battles to come. The next morning they rose with the dawn, the cold biting at their faces, a harsh reminder of the challenges ahead. The frozen wastes tested them in every way. Blizzards descended upon them without warning, whiteouts that erased the world beyond a few feet. They fought against the wind that seemed to push them back with every step they took. Yet, through it all, they pressed on, driven by a purpose greater than any one of them. It was on the crest of a frozen ridge that they finally saw their destination, a temple carved into the side of a glacier, its ancient walls standing defiant against the ravages of time and weather. The temple was said to house the first of the remaining artifacts, guarded by the spirits of those who had once worshipped the old gods. As they approached the temple, a sense of unease settled over the group. Shadows flitted at the edge of their vision, whispers carried on the wind, spirits that had not fully departed the mortal realm. Lysandra stepped forward, her connection to the necrotic energies allowing her to communicate with the lingering souls. We seek to protect the realm from darkness, she intoned, her voice carrying both command and respect. The spirits, appeased by her words, granted them passage into the temple. The interior was a labyrinth of ice, its corridors reflecting the light in a myriad of colors. The silence within was absolute, a stark contrast to the howling winds outside. They found the artifact on an altar in the heart of the temple, its presence filling the room with a palpable power. It was encased in ice, its glow muted but still visible beneath the frozen surface. As they approached, the temperature dropped further, a supernatural chill that sought to sap their strength and will. Kale and Lysandra worked together, weaving spells of warmth and light to melt the ice, revealing the artifact. A crystal as blue as the deepest ocean, pulsing with an inner light. Sir Gavriel carefully wrapped the artifact in a cloth, placing it in his pack alongside its twin. The weight of their quest grew heavier with each step they took back through the temple, the eyes of the spirits upon them, watching, judging. The journey back through the frozen wastes was no less arduous, but the knowledge that they now held two of the five artifacts gave them a renewed sense of urgency. They were one step closer to preventing the darkness from returning, one step closer to facing the trials that awaited them in the Silver Shoals and the Blightmoor. The party emerged from the frozen wastes, the artifacts in their possession like twin stars against the darkness that threatened the realms. The thawing lands welcomed them with the promise of spring, the air fresh with the scent of new growth in the distant sea. But their respite was brief, for the silver shoals and the secrets they held lay ahead, a siren call to the wary and the brave. Their journey led them to the coast, where the land kissed the sea and the waves sang of ancient times. The Silver Shoals were not merely a place, but a legend, home to the merfolk who were as mysterious as the depths they inhabited. It was said that they guarded the third artifact, a people both beautiful and formidable, their loyalties inscrutable to landwalkers. As the party stood on the shore, gazing at the churning waters, they contemplated their approach. The merfolk are not known to trust easily, Aaron observed, his eyes scanning the horizon for a sign of the elusive people. We must extend our hand in peace, Kale suggested, his understanding of the arcane suggesting a parley over confrontation. Sir Gavriel nodded in agreement, his code of honor resonating with the notion. We shall show them our purpose is just, he said firmly. It was Lysandra, with her connection to the otherworldly, who called to the merfolk, her voice carried across the waters, a chant that rose and fell with the rhythm of the tides. They waited the sun setting in a blaze of color, painting the sky in hues of fire and gold. As night descended, the waters before them began to glow with an ethereal light. Figures emerged from the depths, their forms lithe and elegant, their eyes reflecting the moonlight. The merfolk had answered their summons. We seek an artifact, ancient and powerful, said to be under your protection, Kale spoke, his words chosen with care. 
the merfolk regarded them, their expressions unreadable. The artifact is sacred to us, their leader, a mermaid with scales that shimmered like mother of pearl, replied, Why should we entrust it to you? We seek to prevent a darkness that threatens all realms. Yours and ours, Sir Gavriel said, his voice carrying the weight of his conviction. The merfolk conferred in hushed tones, their language a melody that was both strange and beautiful. After a time, they turned back to the party. We will test your truth, the mermaid declared. You shall face the trials of trust. Succeed and the artifact will be yours. The trials were as enigmatic as the merfolk themselves. Each member of the party was tested in turn, not just in strength, but in spirit. Aaron navigated a treacherous underwater labyrinth, his path lit only by the faint glow of bioluminescent algae. Nyx moved through shadows cast by the moonlit sea, her silent steps leaving no trace on the sandy floor. Kale was challenged to dispel a maelstrom with nothing but his will and his knowledge of the arcane. Sir Gavriel stood before the merfolk, his honor on trial. He was presented with illusions of his darkest fears and his greatest desires, but he remained steadfast, his shield as much a defense against deception as against any blade. Lysandra's trial was the most harrowing. She had to bind and banish a spirit of the deep, a creature of salt water and storm that raged against her control. Yet, she prevailed, her power over death proving stronger than the pull of the abyss. When the trials were complete, the merfolk bowed their heads in respect. You have proven your worth, the mermaid said, and she presented them with the artifact, a shell iridescent and perfect. It song a whisper of the ocean's depths. With three artifacts now in their possession, the group returned to land. The trials had tested their resolve and their trust in one another, each trial a mirror reflecting their deepest selves. They had faced these reflections and emerged not shattered, but whole, their bonds stronger for it. But even as they celebrated their victory, their thoughts turned to the Blightmoor, the place where the next artifact lay hidden. The moor was a land of decay and shadow, a stark contrast to the purity of the shoals. It would demand even more from them, a challenge that would test the very limits of their courage. As they set camp on the edge of the sea, the sound of the waves a soothing lullaby, they knew that their journey was far from over. The blight moor awaited, its bogs and mists a veil over the darkness that lay in wait. But for now they rested, the artifacts safe within their circle, the trials behind them, and the greater challenge ahead. With the ocean's song still lingering in their ears, the party set their sights on the Blightmoor, a realm as feared as it was foul. Where the Silver Shoals had been a testament to life in its most resplendent forms, the moor was a canvas of decay, a land where life seemed to wither at the very touch of its mists. As they traveled, the verdant lands began to give way to a palette of grays and sickly greens. The trees became gnarled, their branches twisted in agony, and the ground underfoot squelched with each step, releasing the stench of rot with every footprint left behind. Nyx's sharp eyes were the first to catch sight of the Blightmoor's borders, where the fog clung to the earth like a shroud. We must be wary, she warned. This place, it hides more than it reveals. Kale nodded in agreement, his staff at the ready, the crystal atop it pulsing as if in warning. The magic here is old and tainted. We will need to shield our minds as much as our bodies. The Blightmoor was unwelcoming, its air thick with spores and the buzz of insects. The group stayed close, their senses alert for the dangers hidden by the fog. Sir Gavriel led with his shield raised, an unyielding sentinel against the unseen threats that lurked in the mists. They were not merely contending with the land, but with the growing sense of dread that seeped into their bones. The moor was a place of despair, its very essence anathema to the hope they carried with them. It tested their resolve, whispering promises of defeat, of futility, of the darkness that awaited should they falter. Aaron's guidance was invaluable, his familiarity with the wilds allowing them to navigate the treacherous terrain. He found paths where none seemed to exist, his keen eyes spotting the safe havens amidst the mire. Lysandra's connection to the dead provided them with an unexpected ally, the spirits of those who had fallen victim to the Moor's malice. With her command, they rose to aid the party, sharing whispers of paths taken and pitfalls to avoid. 
It was during one such crossing, over a bog that threatened to swallow them whole, that they were set upon. From the mists emerged creatures born of the moor itself, wraiths of root and vine, their forms shifting, their intentions clear as they descended upon the party. The battle was fierce, each strike against the wraiths a blow against the moor itself. Nix's daggers found the hearts of their foes, if such creatures could be said to have hearts. Aaron's arrows flew true, imbued with magic by Kale to pierce the unnatural hides of their adversaries. Sir Gavriel's valor was a beacon for them all, his shield a bastion against the onslaught, his sword a cleaver of darkness. And Kale's spells illuminated the battlefield, a cascade of light against the encroaching gloom. But it was Lysandra who turned the tide. Raising her arms, she called upon her arcane packs, her voice a command that shook the very foundations of the moor. The wraiths, bound to the will of the Blightmoor, found themselves facing a greater power, a necromancer who was master over death and decay. As the last wraith dissipated into the fog, the party pressed on, their victory a hard-fought testament to their unity. The artifact of the Blightmoor was said to be held in the heart of the mire, a jewel nestled within a crown of thorns. They found it at last, a stone as black as night, set upon an altar of twisted roots. Its power was palpable, a pulse that beat in time with the moor's own heart. With careful hands, Sir Gavriel secured the artifact, the set now four of five, their mission nearing its end. As they made their way back through the Blightmoor, the land seemed to watch them, its fog parting reluctantly before them. They had taken what it had guarded for centuries, and the moor did not forgive easily. But they emerged from its grasp, the artifacts in their possession a promise of a future free from the shadows they sought to banish. The group had faced trials of trust, of valor, and of power, and they had emerged not just unscathed, but unbroken. Their next destination was known only in whispers and fear, the shadowed veil, where the final artifact lay hidden. It was a place of darkness absolute, a valley that had never known the sun's caress. The shadowed veil lay shrouded in an eternal twilight, its name a byword for dread in the hearts of those who dared to utter it. The air was cool and still, as if afraid to stir the darkness that clung to the twisted trees and the ground itself. This was the domain of the final artifact, the last piece of the puzzle that had driven the party across realms and through trials unnumbered. The group's journey to the veil was silent, a march filled with determination and the unspoken fears that gripped their hearts. They had grown much since their first meeting in Eldoria, from strangers to allies, from allies to a united front against the encroaching dark. As they entered the veil, the absence of light was near total, a cloak of obscurity that tested their senses and their resolve. Aaron led with a hunter's intuition, his ears attuned to the slightest sound. Nix's eyes pierced the darkness, catching glimpses of movement in the shadows. Sir Gavriel's armor gleamed faintly, a dim light in the oppressive gloom. Kale's staff provided a beacon of arcane light, the crystal atop it now resonating with the presence of its kin, four artifacts that hummed with the anticipation of their convergence. Lysandra's chants were a soft murmur, a thread of power that wove protection around them. They found the final artifact not by sight but by feel, a cold that seeped into their bones, a whisper of malice that touched their minds. It lay at the center of the veil, on an island in a lake of ink, a stone dais its throne. The artifact was unlike the others, a void in the shape of a gem, darkness made solid, an abyss that called to the abyss within. As Sir Gavriel reached out to claim it, the veil stirred, a sigh that was both a lament and a challenge. From the darkness emerged the cultists, robed figures whose eyes gleamed with madness and hunger. They had been the shadow trailing the party's steps, waiting for the moment when the artifacts would be gathered to strike. The cultists moved with eerie coordination, their spells weaving a tapestry of darkness that sought to ensnare the party. But the group stood ready, their own tapestry more vibrant, more resilient, woven from their shared trials and triumphs. The battle was a storm of light and shadow, each clash an echo of the greater struggle between the forces they represented. 
Nyx's blade struck with deadly precision, finding the gaps in the cultists' defenses. Aaron's arrows were streaks of lightning, piercing the gloom with their radiance. Sir Gavriel was a juggernaut, his faith a hammer against the cultists' zealotry. Kale's magic was a chorus of elemental fury, his spells a symphony that played counterpoint to the cultists' dirge. Lysandra stood at the heart of the maelstrom, her power the fulcrum upon which the battle balanced. She called upon the spirits of the Vale, the Forgotten and the Lost, and they answered her call with a wail of vengeance. As the final cultist fell, the artifacts pulsed as one, their combined power a beacon that pierced the Vale's darkness. The party worked quickly, knowing that the artifacts, once united, could unleash the very evil they sought to bind. They placed the artifacts upon the dais, the stones arranged in a pattern as old as time. Kale began the incantation, his voice steady and clear. Sir Gavriel's prayers lent strength to the spell, a plea for light in the darkness. Aaron and Nyx guarded them, their vigilance unwavering. Lysandra's will was the conduit, her connection to the realms of death and life the key to the seal. The artifact's light grew blinding, a crescendo of power that reached towards the heavens. Then with a final word, a final plea, the light exploded outward a nova of pure energy that washed over the veil, over the party, over the land itself. The darkness was not destroyed but contained, sealed within the artifacts once more, their power channeled to reinforce the ancient bindings that held the evil at bay. When the light faded, the veil was transformed. Sunlight touched the ground for the first time in centuries, and where the dais had stood, there was now only stone and the remnants of chains that had bound an ancient darkness. The party stood together, their mission complete. The veil would no longer be shadowed, the artifacts no longer a threat. They had prevented the night that would have engulfed the world. As they made their way back to Eldoria, the road seemed brighter, the air fresher. They had faced the darkness together and had emerged as champions of the light. The artifacts were hidden once more, each returned to the far corners of the realm, guarded by new wards and watched over by those who understood the cost of vigilance. The party had disbanded, each member returning to their own path, forever changed by the journey they had shared. Kale returned to his arcane studies, his knowledge deepened by the magic he had witnessed and wielded. He became a mentor to others, teaching that power was not just a tool, but a responsibility. Sir Gavriel traveled the land, his shield and sword ever at the ready. He spread the word of the light, of the need for hope, and the importance of standing firm against the encroaching dark. Lysandra retreated to the places between worlds, her mastery over life and death recognized and respected. She became a bridge between the living and the spirits, guiding lost souls and guarding against the misuse of necromantic powers. Nyx vanished as quietly as she had fought, her presence a shadow that passed into legend but whispers of a just assassin who fought from the darkness to protect the light would surface now and again. Aaron returned to the wilds, his bond with nature strengthened by his trials. He stood as a guardian of the balance, ensuring that the wilderness remained a sanctuary for the creatures that dwelled within. And as for the land, it flourished. The tale of the five who had stood against the darkness served as a reminder that unity was the true shield against evil that when hearts and minds worked in concert, no shadow could prevail. In time, the party would reunite, drawn together by friendship and the unspoken knowledge that their bond was unbreakable. They met in Eldoria, where it all began, sharing tales of their exploits and adventures since parting ways. The sun set on Eldoria, painting the sky with hues of victory and peace. The five stood together one last time, looking out over the land they had saved. They spoke of the future, of the paths yet to walk, but also of the past, of the journey that had defined them. Their story, a tapestry woven from the threads of their individual fates, hung in the stars, a constellation that would guide future generations. The five heroes of Eldoria had become more than a party. They had become a symbol of hope, a testament to the power of unity and the enduring light that comes from standing together against the night. And thus, the tale of their adventure came to a close. Not with an ending, but with the promise of new beginnings. For in every ending is sown the seeds of a new journey, 
and in every memory, the promise of eternal legend.